In this video, I'm going to show you how to get Game Boy and Game Boy Color set up to run on your Wii U using RetroArch. I honestly can't think of a more prestigious line of handhelds than the Game Boy and Game Boy Color. I mean, the Game Boy came out in 1989 and was basically the king of handhelds until it was replaced in 1999 by the Game Boy Color, which then also ran supreme until it was replaced by the Game Boy Advance in 2000 or 2001. I don't really remember right now. Don't, don't worry about it. But anyway, the Game Boy and Game Boy Color had an enormous library of games and a lot of them still hold up so well today and are so fun to play. And while the Game Boy and Game Boy Color didn't make it into the Wii U Virtual Console, thanks to Homebrew and something like RetroArch, we can play these games on the Wii U. And that's what I'm going to show you how to do today, so let's dive in. So to get started with Game Boy and Game Boy Color emulation on the Wii U, we need Game Boy and Game Boy Color games. If you happen to own an N64, an EverDrive, and a transfer pack, I do have a guide on how to dump your, your Game Boy and Game Boy Color games using those items, and I'll put a link in the description below on how to do that. Alternatively, you could also dump them using a Retro 2 with the Game Boy and Game Boy Color plugin. But once you have your games sourced, we just need to put them onto our Wii U SD card. So I have my Wii U SD card here. And I made a folder in it in the prior tutorial and named it RetroArch ROMs. So I'm just going to open up this folder and put my Game Boy and Game Boy Color games inside. Once you have your games placed where you want them in the SD card, you can close out of it, take it out of your computer, and put it into your Wii U and get the system booted up. Now, just as a quick reminder, this guide is a continuation of my original Wii U RetroArch install video, so if you need to get RetroArch installed or you want to install this forwarder channel like you see here on my Wii U home screen, refer back to that video on how to do so, as well as initial settings that we will be using inside of RetroArch. But now that we got that out of the way, go ahead and boot into RetroArch, either through the forwarder channel or through the homebrew launcher, whatever your preferred method is. And once RetroArch is loaded up, we're free to begin loading up our Game Boy and Game Boy Color game. So to do so, we will just go to Load Core, press right on our D-pad to go down to Nintendo. And for this video, I'm going to be using the Gambat Core because Same Boy, which is my normal go-to, just isn't running as well as I'd like it to. It seems like things are running just a hair slower than they should be, and it's kind of annoying me. But when I ran them in my old favorite Gambat, they seem to work okay, so this is the one I'm going to be using for this video. So, press A on Gambat. And once the core is switched over, we can go back in to load content. Press A on the SD card option, and go to where we have our game stored. So again, I stored mine in a folder named RetroArch ROMs, and then I have a Game Boy Color folder and a Game Boy folder. So, from here you can just select one of those and then you can select a game and tell it to load in the current core. I really don't care for this method, I think it's slow and obnoxious. So instead what I like to do is make a games playlist. So to do this, you just go back to the main menu, scroll down to the import content tab here, tell it to do a manual scan. Content directory, we're gonna start with Game Boy, so SD card, RetroArch ROMs, Game Boy games, scan this directory. Now for system name, just press right on your D-pad to go down to Nintendo and find Game Boy. And default core, we're going to choose Nintendo and Gambat. Now make sure scan recursively is on if you have your games separated into subfolders. And if you have them zipped, make sure scan inside archives is on. Once you have these options set how you need them, click on start scan. And when you back out, you should now have a nice new Game Boy playlist right here. And now I'm going to do the same thing for Game Boy Color. So, Import Content tab, Manual Scan, Content Directory. I'm going to go to my RetroArch ROMs folder and choose the Game Boy Color folder. Scan this directory. System Name. I'm going to change this from Game Boy to Game Boy Color. And the default core is going to remain the same. And then, same thing as before, make sure Scan Recursively is on if you have them in subfolders. And make sure Scan Inside Archives is turned on if you have your game zipped but then just hit start scan. And once the scan's complete, you should have a nice new Game Boy Color entry here as well. But now that the playlists are made, we're free to begin loading up our games. So I'm just gonna start with Game Boy here, and I'm gonna go to Metroid 2, press A, and press A again to run it, and it will load up.
And there it is, Game Boy Games on a Wii U, fully playable. This is so fun. So for those of you looking to get Game Boy and Game Boy Color games up and running on your Nintendo Wii U, that is virtually the process. All you need to do is put your games on the SD card and load them up within RetroArch and you are good to go. Not much involved with this one, no BIOS file setup or anything required. But for those of you that are interested in seeing some of the more advanced options within the Gambat Core, we are going to go over those now. So if you press the home button on your Wii U gamepad, it will bring up your RetroArch quick menu. From here, we can scroll down to options and press A, and we have a lot of things in here that we can mess with. So the first one being allow opposing directions. I don't use this. If you know you need this, you can turn it on or off. The next option is Game Boy Colorization, and this tries to apply color palettes to Game Boy games to make them just a little bit better, so... You know, doesn't look too bad on auto. But then you could also choose, like, just a standard Game Boy Color color palette if you were playing Game Boy games in the Game Boy Color. You know, they gave them those interesting color palettes. You can also do Super Game Boy. And then there's also Eternal. Then there's also a custom one where you can set custom uh, color palettes within a, a folder in your system folder, I believe. I'm not sure exactly how the custom color palette works. Just because I'm not enough of a Game Boy Power user to actually use them, I'm perfectly happy with the options that have been given to me. But mess around with them, see which ones you think look good, and you can just roll with it. Now the next option actually applies to the Game Boy Colorization option, so when you have this set to internal, it makes it look like the original green Game Boy, and that's because that's what I have selected here for the internal palette. So if we were to change the internal palette while we have internal selected, it actually changes it to mimic a bunch of different things. And there's a ton in here, there's so, so many options. And there's some really fun ones in here too. You can uh, make your eyes bleed by making it look like a Virtual Boy if you want. This VMU one I think is pretty cool. Dreamcast VMU simulation. I think that's pretty neat. Wonder Swan screen. And then just so, so many interesting things. But for authenticity's sake, I like to leave this set to just normal uh, Game Boy, personally but there's a ton of options in there for you to mess with. And next up we have color correction, and this is mostly for Game Boy Color things, so I'm actually gonna switch over to a Game Boy Color game real quick to show you what I mean here. All right, so here we have Metal Gear Solid for Game Boy Color, an actually really solid title. <laughs> uh, I'm punny. Uh, anyway, but this gives us a good example of what Game Boy color color correction looks like here so going back into the quick menu and then the options menu this is what the game looks like with color correction off and then if we enable it for Game Boy Color games you can see that the colors get a little bit more washed out and this is actually an accuracy setting to mimic what the Game Boy Color LCD screen looked like so if you prefer accuracy you can enable it or if you prefer sharper richer colors you can leave it disabled it's the great thing about emulation, it gives us choice. Personally, I prefer accuracy, so I'm going to leave my colors being a little washed out. Now, to follow along with our color correction, we actually have a color correction mode, and there are two versions available. There is accurate and fast. Just leave it on accurate. It doesn't slow it down, so no reason to mess with it, really. Then you can also change the color correction to mimic light sources coming from different angles. So there's central, which is what we have here. Then you could do it above screen, which kind of changes the way the colors are washed out. And same with below, they change it again. This is a little more, it's a little more contrasty, so you might like below. If you want to have color correction, that is, at all. So I'm actually going to turn mine to below, just because I like that little bit of extra contrast. Next, we have a dark filter option, and this lets us dim the screen, just depending on the game you're playing. Like, say you're playing an original Game Boy game, you have it just set to the standard white color palette. Some of those games can be very bright, so if you enable the dark filter, it will actually dim the screen. This way it makes the viewing experience a little more pleasant if you didn't want to enable one of those color palettes. Next we have emulated hardware, so we can select what type of hardware we're actually playing our Game Boy or Game Boy Color games on. 
For the most part, auto works really well, but there are certain Game Boy Color games that can be run on Game Boy Advance hardware to unlock special features, so you can actually select a Game Boy Advance in here. So games like Shantae, for example, had an extra item in Dungeon, I believe, if you had it on a Game Boy Advance. Maybe it was just an item. I can't really remember off the top of my head. But if you have a game that you know has Game Boy Advance specific options in it, you can tell it that it's running on a Game Boy Advance. Otherwise, auto should work for most use cases. Next, you can use official bootloaders if you happen to have them. It's really hard to get an official Game Boy and Game Boy Color bootloader, so I've never done it. I've never needed to. High-level emulation has been around for Game Boy and Game Boy Color for decades, so I've never actually used an official bootloader for these. But if you happen to have them, you can use them. Put them in your system folder. Our next option is Interframe Blending, and this tries to simulate the LCD ghosting effect that was on a Game Boy and Game Boy Color LCD, and this is really cool to me. I really like to have it. And there are a number of games that rely on the ghosting for transparency effects. So we have a number of different options available. We've got Simple, LCD Ghosting Accurate, or LCD Ghosting Fast. For the Wii U, I like to use Ghosting Fast, just because it's a little less demanding and I want to make sure my games run good, and Fast still looks pretty dang good. But again, this just gives your screen a nice set of motion blur to mimic an LCD screen of a Game Boy, and it's just a really nice, accurate touch. And now our final option is Gamepad Rumble Strength. So there were a number of Game Boy Color games that had a rumble feature, like Episode 1 Racer or Kirby. I believe there was a Kirby game that had, no, Kirby had tilt sensors. Well anyway, Episode 1 Racer had rumble. So when you play that game, it will have rumble, and you could choose the strength of that rumble feature here. So I mean, you could disable it entirely or just have it on max. And that's going to do it as far as core options are concerned. Once you have everything set up the way you want, you can save them as a core override, or if you want to save things as individual game overrides, you could do so at the top of the options menu here. You can see that there's a create game options file entry here. So if there's some games you want ghosting on or color correction on, you can have that. Or if there's other ones you don't, you can do that as well on a per game basis. For me, I like having everything kind of accurate, so... My settings as I have them here are great for me, so I'm just going to save these as an overall core override just to make sure that whenever I load up a Game Boy or Game Boy Color game, these are the settings that will greet me. Now, normally at this part of the video, I'd cover shaders, but the Wii U shader system is really strange, so I'm planning on making a dedicated shader video after the core videos have been completed, so stay tuned for that. But that's going to do it as far as Game Boy and Game Boy Color emulation on the Wii U is concerned. As always, if you happen to have any questions, feel free to ask me down in the comment section below, and I will do my best to try to help you out. But now, if you could all do me a huge favor, and be sure to hit that like or dislike button, just depending on how much you like today's tutorial. And if you haven't done so already, please hit that sub button so you can see when new videos just like this go live on my channel, and it really helps me out. And I cannot thank you all enough for that. If you'd like to further help support the channel, you can also check out that join button here on YouTube or click on that Patreon link in the bottom right hand corner of the screen. Really goes a long way to keeping the channel running and I am just so grateful for the consideration in that regard. But that's going to do it for today, so until next time my wonderful internet peeps, stay awesome and we will see you all back next video.